Hello friends, this video on structure of atoms part 31 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 30. Shapes of atomic orbitals. If you see the wave function which you have gone psi has no physical meaning. So if you observe from a hi-fi microscope or something, you won't see the orbitals actually. This is something which you can't see. Because it doesn't have any physical meaning. It's just probability function, just a function. It's just a mathematical function for the coordinates of electron. However, the diff for different orbitals, for a corresponding difference, uh, wave function is function to r are different. The, the shape of orbital which you get from these wave functions as a function of r are different. And the square of this wave function gives the probability density for the electron at a given point. For example, for 1s, if you see, the electrons are there at this point. High probability of finding electrons. Right? It goes off and then from here there is no probability of finding electron. For 2s, if you see, it starts at this. It, it, here it ends here. It starts here. There is a high probability here. Right? Again it dips off. That means this is the range where you get high probability of finding electron in 2s orbital. For 1s, this is the range where you get probability of finding electron. Correct. And we have regions where uh, there is a zero probability of finding electrons and they are called nodal surface or called simply nodes. So if you see in this case, I have my 1s, then I have 2s, so this is my 1s, this is my 2s, this is the reason between 1s and 2s and this is node because there you have zero probability of finding electron. For 3s, also if you see, this is 3s, the bigger circle, then I have 2s, then I have 1s, then if you see, this two are the nodes where I have zero probability of finding electrons. Okay? So nodal surface and node are the place where we have zero probability of finding, or very less probability of finding electrons. Shapes of the atomic orbital, as I told, right, is just a mathematical function it doesn't exist really but if you want to understand this we can draw a boundary surface diagram boundary surface diagram just example in geography we have contour diagrams and latitude longitude these don't exist right if you go to any place you won't be able to find latitude longitude it's just a convention we have used to make our life better similarly here also these these things doesn't exist plaque one you're seeing doesn't exist they're just the diagrams which we create to make our life easy to understand chemistry easily. So the boundary surface diagram of the constant probability density for a given orbitals give a fairly good representation of the shape of the orbitals. This just give you imaginative shape of the orbital. So in this representation what we do, uh, a boundary surface or a contour surface is drawn in the space for an orbital in which the value of probability density is constant. For example in this case, at this point, this point, this point, the probability density is constant. So I'll draw one line. Here also it's constant, constant, constant. So I'll draw again, draw one circle. But the lighter color, because the color will design the probability. And thus, if you keep drawing, you'll get something like this, right? Because if you see one dark, dark hair, the same darkness designed that the probability density is, uh, probability is same to get the electron in, in this region. This is lighter, that means you have less probability of magnetic electron. Right? So, in principle, if you see, there are so many boundary surfaces may be possible. So, if you combine this, you get this kind of shape. Right? And generally, we take uh, the probability where it's 90%, 100% is not possible, right? Because if you say 100%, that means you are sure the electron exists there, and then it, it contradicts the uh, Heisenberg principle where you say that you can't actually tell the position of the electron. So it can't be 100%, almost 90%. So we generally draw a contour and we get this kind of shape. Right? And boundary surface for a S orbital is actually a, sh a spherical in shape. For example, in this case, if you see, and this is a two dimensional, it looks like a circle, and three dimensional, it looks like a sphere. 
let's talk about the s orbital shape of the size of s orbitals this is my s orbitals and i'll show you the movement of electron also all the s orbitals are spherically symmetric because they all spherical shape you see this is how the electron moves in the uh, sphere if you see this electron is going in coming out that's why you see the size is growing and sinking also it's moving so it's three dimensional motion the electron can be anywhere anywhere in the sphere anywhere in this sphere right and that's was the orbital is all about and please note this orbital doesn't exist actually this is just our visualization to understand this orbital in a better way so the size of s orbitals increase with the value of n so 1s has a small size 2s bigger 3s bigger and 4s bigger and uh, pictorially we see a, a, a radial node appears to be a spherical surface in which there is no electron density if you see the radial node i told is something where you don't have any electron density the chances of finding probability is very less the number of radial node is nothing but n minus l minus 1 so for s orbital my l is 0 so for s orbital the number of radial node is n minus 1 so if you see for n is equal to 1 there is zero radial node for n is equal to 2 i have one radial node here for n is equal to 3 i have two radial node here right because for s orbital l is equal to 0 so this becomes n minus 1 but this number of radial node n minus l minus 1 is a general formula for any kind of orbital this s p or d the formula is same and number of angular node is l in our case for s orbital l is 0 there is no angular node we'll discuss the angular node when we'll discuss the p orbitals let's understand that the general formula for radial node the number is n minus l minus 1 general formula and for angular node the formula is the number of radial nodes let's take the p orbitals p orbitals look like this if you see the electrons can move anywhere there are two electrons in this p orbitals if you see in the s orbitals we also we had only two electrons so there are two electrons can move anywhere and it has two sections called lobes so you see there are two lobes actually on either side of the plane and the probability of finding uh, probability density is zero on a plane where two lobes touch each other this place also there's a probability of finding zero electron and uh, the size shape of three uh, energy of three orbitals are same the size shape and energy is same but the orientation is different right the size shape and everything is same energy is also same but the orientation is different and if you see px py pz are the three different way of uh, noting this so we'll continue with p orbitals So, like s orbitals, if you see p orbitals also increase in size and energy with the increase in the quantum number n. That is, two p, three p, four p. The size and energy is more for this guy, four p. Also, like as the probability density of the function for p orbitals also pass through a value of zero, right? Besides a zero at infinite distance, and those are called the nodes actually. The number of nodes here is given by n minus two. Why? Because the general formula was n minus l minus one. Here l is equal to one. So this becomes n minus two. So the nodes is n minus two, and the radial node is was l. The general formula here l is equal to one. The radial node is one. Right? Sorry, this is radial node itself. So For three p, this becomes three minus two one. For four p, this becomes four minus two. That is two. So the radial node formula here is n minus two. But don't remember all this. Just remember n minus l minus the general formula. In this case, l is one. So this becomes n minus one minus one is n minus two. So for three uh, p, my n is three. So radial node is one three minus two. For four p, the radial node is four minus two. That is two and so on. Angular node. Also, is a planar or a conical surface in which there is no electron density. For p orbitals, we have one planar node. Why? Because for angular node, I told the number is l, and in this case, p orbital, the l value is one. So it will have only one angular node. 
and since the energy E of each orbital is a function of only of n, right, then all n is equal to 2 orbitals have same energy. So if you say 2s, 2px, 2y, 2pz, they all have same energy for hydrogen. Right? But actually if you see 2s and 2p, they have different energies. That depends on n plus l for multi electron. The number of radial node is given by n minus l minus 1. And if you see for p orbital l is equal to 1, so this becomes n minus 2. We have covered this here. And the number of angular nodes is given by l. So for p orbitals l is equal to 1, so the number of angular nodes is always 1. This is also covered. Next take d orbital now. d orbital now, you see it looks like this. And this also will have 2 electrons and they will be moving in this orbital. Right? For this, L is equal to 2 and the minimum uh, principal quantum number for this is 3. Why 3? Because for L is equal to 2, the minimum value of N has to be 3. Correct? Because L cannot be greater than N minus 1. There are 5 values of ML. Minus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 2, plus 1. And that's why we have five different shapes for d orbitals. All the orbitals have equivalent energy, and all three d orbitals. I'm telling the d orbitals for which n is greater also have same and shapes similar to three d orbitals, but the energy and size is different. Shape is same, but the energy and size is different for orbitals which are greater than d. For example, four d, five d. They have same shape, but the energy and size is different. Uh, the radial load, beside the radial load, the probability density function for n, p, and d are zero at planes passing through nucleus, and they are called angular nodes, right? And for this, uh, the angular node is L. For uh, for d orbitals, the value of L is two, so they are two angular nodes. Now let's take the overview of uh, atomic orbital we have discussed the atomic orbital let's this let's take the same picture once again and discuss things so we have in this case we have this is my 1s this this uh, square is 2s then i have two p's one there two p y two p z and then i have three s and each of these will have two two electrons if you see all these moves this is not moving because I have drawn this. So this 3s also will have two electrons which will be somewhere moving around here and there. Right? If you see, the black one moves only in this particular p orbital. The yellow one, if you see, moves only in the 2s orbitals. The green one here moves only in 1s orbitals, right? If you see the red ones move only in this particular p orbital. And that's how it is. So we have different orbitals and if you grow on, if you have one more uh, 3s, if you have 3p, again we have to draw something like this here, the big ones. I can draw, I can draw this. So it will be something like this. So this is 2, then I'll have something called 2px, 2py, and something like this. So it will be my p, right? So this is my p. This will be my uh, 3p. And so on, it will be carry on. It will have 3. D also, then I have to draw something like this. And all of this will start from origin actually. Correct? That's how the uh, look and feel of this. Atom. With this, you get the clarity of how the atom looks like in the real world. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to Watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.